everybody. Anybody want to guess why I have a big number five on the board? Did you figure it out? Five weeks, five more videos counting today. So we are on the countdown for the end of the year and we are at five. It's very exciting and I wish I was able to just stand up here with you and tell you how totally proud I am of you guys because I really am. You guys have worked so hard all year long. This next week you're going to be finishing up um, chapter 11 and we're going to move into chapter 12 and then you are done. Isn't that awesome? Ah! Okay, so we are on five. Next week we'll be on four and we will keep our countdown moving on. So, all right. Well, welcome to this week's class online. Um, this is the video for 4.30, so April 30th. And um, we're going to start today by talking about your quizzes from last week, okay? For the most part, those went really well. I did not expect that that was going to be an easy quiz. I really didn't. Um, it was not an easy quiz. So the fact that most of you guys got it, you know, I, I think most of you guys got a B or higher. You really, really did well, okay? And I can see that you've been studying. So. But we're going to take a minute and we're going to go through our body picture again, okay? Um, you really need to be doing these every day until you've got it down, okay? Every other noun that you get that's a body part, you're going to be able to know by its ending, okay, whether it's a masculine or feminine um, uh, third declension, okay, which then you have to figure out if it's masculine or feminine, or you may have to memorize it, but you can figure out if it's a third declension. You can figure out if it's a first or second, right, based on its ending. Um, but these third neuters are really strange, and you just have to memorize them. So I came up with just an easy way to memorize those. So we're going to go on ahead and put our guy up on the board again. Okay, and I would like you to pause the video and put and go on ahead and draw him and then check out whether or not uh, you are correct. Okay, so I'm going to go on ahead and proceed. All right, so we have the guy standing in the river. He looks a little taller today than usual. <laughs> Usually he's fat and uh, wide when I draw him, but at any rate. Okay, so we're going to start here. We have a flumen, and then several of you guys missed this, flumina. Okay, remember that stem change with that I, okay? Now let's not forget, these are all third declension, okay, neuter. These are all neuter, so on your quiz, when you saw cruis, okay, and then you had to write the plural, crura, and we know this means leg, you also had to write the gender, which was neuter. Everything on this picture is neuter. You've got to remember that, okay? These are third declension neuters. They're very, very strange, just like our eight-eyed monster, right? We drew another piece of art to help us remember that with Animal and Mara being those really, uh, really strange exceptions to even our neuters, okay? So let's keep going. So he has legs, he's standing in a river. Remember, he has a very funky looking chest. This is a pectus. The plural is pectora, okay? He has a heart a core and a corda and you know what actually no i better not put him there because he has idols okay so then our caput capita this is where we get the word 
capital, okay? It's the head of our country, Washington, D.C., for example, or the head of our state, Richmond, okay? Ca capital, capital. He has an os, a mouth, and ora, okay? This is where we get that word oral, oral, like to speak orally, or maybe you're having oral surgery. That means you're having surgery in your mouth, right? Okay, so there he is. And then we know that the whole thing, the whole thing is his corpus and his corpora. Okay, now this um, next test, chapter 11, you are going to have to be using these just like you have been in your worksheets, your exercises, your exercitium in your workbook, okay? But you're gonna have to be using these on your test. Okay, so let's just take a minute and remember that these are not the only forms. These are just the, the nominative, okay? So if we're gonna plug this in, let's, let's use this one, okay? We would be writing this. I'm gonna go ahead and erase these so that I can remember, or I have space, I mean. Corpus corpora, okay? So there's our singular, and there's our plural. This is our nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, and ablative, okay? Corpus corpora. Now remember, I keep, well, not yet, neuter law, corpus corpora, so neuter law, these two are the same, right? And then I have to keep this stem change, okay? Whoops, I spelled it wrong. See if you can write these out with me. Corporis, corpor um, I'm running out of space, okay, corpor e, ah, I keep spelling it wrong, what's wrong with me, corpor ibis, corpor e, corpor ibis, okay, all right, sorry, it's a little bit messy. Do you see how this works? So you've already memorized these endings, okay? Any a, any a, is, um, e, ibis, e, ibis, right? You've already memorized these endings. Um, and then, but then you have to remember that they keep their stem change in all the rest of these forms, okay? All right, I should have chose a shorter one like that one or something. <laughs> All right, so if you get confused on these or if you're having trouble and you're not remembering these changes, you need to do this even multiple times a day, okay? Or maybe, you know, one of the things we do in our family is we'll just leave the whiteboard up like this. It's, it's often in our house. It's not usually down here in the basement. Um, it's usually upstairs. And if there's something somebody's trying to really memorize, we just even leave it on the board so that when they're walking past it, they can just be looking at it. I even do it for myself. If I'm, oh, I just can't get something in my mind, I'll just put it up on the board. Then that way when I'm eating lunch or whatever, I just see it, okay? All right, so you have to know these in order to do your test, okay? So if, you're, if you need work on this and you need to be declining it, then you need to do that in order to prepare for your test. But I would highly, highly suggest that when you pull out your test, you draw this guy, okay? And these forms, you label them so that you do not miss any of these that you definitely know. Because sometimes it's easy to know something here, but then to apply it is a whole nother thing. Okay, all right, so that was a re little review on your quizzes. Okay, so for today's quiz, you're gonna do something a little different, okay? I have sent, in the email with this video, I have sent a, a um, 
an attachment that's called treasure hunt for head verb sentence patterns, okay, in section three. Now what you're gonna do with this is going to be something that you're really not asked to do very much in your workbook. But I'm going to tell you that if you can do this, if you can work your way through this, um, then you will be miles ahead, miles ahead, because this is the key to figuring out how Latin really works and to being able, like once you get further down the road and you start reading original Latin, not Latin that was written by English speaking people, um, this skill is absolutely crucial. Okay, so what you're gonna do, and I'll just gonna show you on the board what you're gonna do with the first one. And I, I put, put in blue everything um, as a key so that your mom can help you with it. You can totally do this together with your mom, with your sibling. Um, she can help you, she can guide you, or you can totally do it on your own. However, you as a family wanna do it. The key is that if you complete it and you send me a picture of it, Okay, and I want to see the marks showing your, your corrections and everything else. You'll have 100% on this quiz, okay? So I really want to know that you're doing this and that you're understanding this, okay? And then we're, gonna, we're actually going to practice with exercise B today. So if you want, I would highly suggest you go ahead and stop the video because exercise B is going to be better um, to probably do after you've done this exercise, okay? This is what we would have done in class except I would have had candy and everything else. Actually, moms, uh, if you have candy or you have chocolate chips or something like that, and your student can look through their book and find the, I put the line numbers on there for where you can find these head verb sentence patterns in section three, you can feel free to give them candy for that. Or if you wanna find a way to make it more fun, like, hey, find the infinitives like every infinitive you find or every head verb you get right or whatever. I, I, don't, I don't know how you want to do it. Um, but I would highly recommend something to just make this as fun as possible and really make sure you understand it. Okay, so again, this is your quiz for this week and I'll make that clear in the email as well. Um, let's go over the first one. So the first one is found in line 90 in line 91, and I'm just gonna go on ahead and write it up here, okay? So what it says is medicus quintum dentem igram habere widet. Okay. So the first thing I would want to do is probably read it out loud and translate it, okay? So the doctor sees that Quintus has a sick tooth. So the doctor sees that Quintus has a sick tooth. Now, what you're going to be doing with this is you're going to be, um, it's not really diagramming, it's kind of like, um, parsing slash diagramming slash just figuring out what every word in the sentence is doing okay all right so the first thing that you should do is bracket out your clause that's inside here okay so here we have our brackets we have a subject so you're going to mark this as the subject you have a head verb so you'd mark this as a head verb and you can do that or put your smiley face on there, whichever, okay? And then you look in here and you say, here's my accusative subject. Here's my infinitive and you can mark it that way or that way, either one's fine, okay? And then Quintus has a what? He has a tooth. That's one of our, it's in the accusative ending this is a direct object, and this is simply an adjective that's um, modifying this word here, this direct object. Okay, so you can just mark that. Okay, so um, that's all you're gonna do for that. So you could go on ahead and stop the video 
and do that quiz. If you do get stuck and you're really having a hard time, and remember, use your book on this. This is open book, open discussion. This is not a normal quiz, okay? But if you do get stuck on it, you could come back to the video, go ahead and unpause it, and do exercise 8B with us, and it might clear up a few things for you because we're still working with head verb sentence patterns on exercise um, 8B. Okay, I'm just gonna mark a little something I just saw. I made, I made this sheet up and I'm hoping there are no, <laughs> there are no mistakes here. So, but I did just see one, so I'm marking it. Ugh. If you do come across a mistake that you're something that you are not sure about or it doesn't seem right to you, please let me know. Um, okay. Um, all right, so next we have, so go ahead and pause and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so welcome back. Hopefully that went well for you. Um, we're going to go on ahead and go through exercise 8B. I would really, really suggest that you mark these on a separate sheet of paper today um, and make sure to go back through and do it yourself, okay? Because this is not an easy um, exercise and um, this is also what largely what um, most of your pensum D is going to be on your shear test. Okay, so this will take me a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to do it as quickly as I can, but I can't figure out how to do these kind of exercises any faster. I don't like having to write them out, but such is life, right? Okay, so let's take a look at number one. So we are on exercise 8B number one. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and write these out because I definitely wanna make sure that we point out and you see kind of the sentence patterns here, okay? For anybody's name, I'm just gonna put their initial though just to make it faster, okay? So, sire ante lectum stat et aemiliae Aquam dot. Okay, so we have a nice sentence here as we're looking at it. Um, we are seeing that this is not one of our head verb sentence patterns, okay? So don't think that everything's going to be a head verb sentence pattern because it's not, right? There's no infinitives in here. All right, so see if you can find the prepositional phrase. Let's start there. So we have one prepositional phrase right here. Okay, good. So we can take those out first. That's easier. Let's see if we can find our subject. Our subject is Syra. So one line under Syra. And what is Syra doing? What are the action verbs? Okay, she is standing and she is giving. Okay, so there's actually two, two verbs here. So let's look before the et. So Syra is standing before the bed and she is giving or she gives the direct object to the, be careful, the indirect object, okay? So here's our direct object to the indirect object. All right, so when we're looking at this sentence, we have one subject, okay? This is being joined by et, Okay, but we have two verbs. Don't be tricked by thinking that this is another subject because it's not, this is in the dative, okay? All right, so let's see. Let's go on ahead and, so you need to write in the, the English. So Syra stands before the bed and gives water to Amelia, okay? Now, I'm not going to write the English out just to take time, but the next part, part B, so this is one, this is one B, okay? It says, Amelia sits near the bed and gives, and I'm just going to put 
Oh, I, I guess I better Quintus. No, this is work. This works. Quintus, a cup of water. Okay, so let's first look at it and see if there is anything like a prepositional phrase and see if we can, f so we'll take those out first. So near the bed, first prepositional phrase, and a cup of water, another prepositional phrase. Okay, what's our subject? Our subject is Amelia, and what is she doing? She's sitting and she's giving. She sits and gives. This looks a lot like this one, doesn't it? Okay, so let's go ahead and follow that pattern. Okay, we would say, Amelia, so we know it's gonna be, this isn't stot, but it would be sedet, near the bed. We need our prepositional phrase, prope, now this is not one of our in cum abex sine sub de pri pro. This is a, an accusative. Okay, sits near the bed. Lectum. So she sits near the bed. And so we know this is going to look the same. Gives. Gives what? Gives a cup. Do you remember the word for cup? Kind of a cool word, poculum. Let me make sure I spell that right. Yep. A poculum of water. So we have that of. So what do we think when we see the word of? We think genitive. Okay. Aquae. So aqua. Aquae. It's a feminine. Okay. To Quintus, so here's our direct object. This one is our indirect object. And remember, direct object takes accusative. Indirect object takes dative. Okay, so we need a dative Quintus. So if we go all the way down in our us, e, um, os, e, orm, o, is, o, is, right? So that dative singular was Quinto. Okay, so here we have it. Amelia sits near the bed and gives a cup of water to Quintus. Okay? Now remember, the word order is not what's important. What's important are those endings. Okay? I would definitely say that the sedet should come before et, but you could have these all switched around and that's okay. Okay? Um, you probably want to keep these in about the same order. You'll see them changed around with poetry, but for the most part, we see them with the preposition first and its object afterwards. Okay, so that was one and one B. All right, let's move on. I'm going to erase. Let's move on to number two. Okay, so number two. Now, when you're looking at number two, something should stand out to you right away. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time to think about it. Julius Serum Tusculum Ire, ooh, there's something that stands out to me, et medicum, I'm not gonna have room to put it all in one line, our Kessere you bet. Okay, so hopefully something stood out to you, okay? And the something that should stand out to you is that this is a head verb sentence pattern. This is what's called an indirect command because they're giving a command. All right, so I'm gonna use my other color to mark up the, the thing. So as we're looking at this, what should stand out? And somebody's pounding down the stairs, if you heard that. <laughs> um, okay, what should stand out is we have a subject, and what's our main verb? Our head verb, right? Here's our head verb. And then we have our clause in there, accusative subject. 
our infinitive. Okay, do you see something else? Ooh, another infinitive. Okay, so he goes to, this is a prepositional phrase, and he fetches the DO, the direct object. All right, so let's try to translate this, and you can write it out and then check it, okay? So, Julius orders the servant to do two things, to go and to fetch. To go where? To Tusculum. Remember, that is that accusative, and we remember that by odd accusative, right? Odd accusative. And to fetch the doctor. All right. Let's look at to be. Okay, to be says the doctor orders, these are long, especially to have to write them out. Now Quintus here, I'm going to just put a Q, to open, and then it says his, so that means that we don't really have to, we don't need to put that, we don't need to put that in um, our Latin. Okay, it's just understood. His mouth to, I'm sorry, it's hard to read this, to show his tongue. All right. Now, something, again, should stand out to you. What has stood out? So we have the doctor as our subject. There's a verb. This is our head verb, okay? There's our head verb. What do we have here? To open. To open. There's our infinitive. To show. There's another infinitive orders Quintus, so here's our accusative subject, orders Quintus, right, to open his mouth, there's a direct object, and to show, I guess, I, maybe I missed that word, and, okay, to show the tongue, his tongue, that's another direct object, okay? All right, that's a lot of stuff going on in this. All right, so let's just start with this, the doctor orders, okay? Let's start with, he's our subject, okay? So we know the doctor orders. Now, did you see how Julius orders? This was all the way at the very end, so I'm gonna put that, which I'm gonna put it past the end because I think it's gonna be a really long sentence. Okay, so I have the doctor orders, the doctor orders, okay? The rest of my sentence is going to fill in here. The doctor orders someone. The doctor orders who? Quintus. There's our accusative subject, okay? So quintum, right? Now, if we look up here, there's our accusative subject, then we need an infinitive with the thing in between and then the et, okay? So, to open is going to go down here. Aperire, aperire, okay? To open his what? His mouth. Ooh, now I remember something about mouth. Mouth is our what? Third declension neuter, right? So, os ora os ora he only has one but we need to go for that accusative i guess i could have moved that over let me move it over so we have room okay os aperire okay there's our infinitive okay infinitive accusative subject direct object now we need an et Okay, because he's going to order something else. He wants him to show ostendere, to show his what? His tongue. And we said that this was a direct object, so we need 
and accusative, okay? All right, I really hope that these make sense. If they don't, you need to go back through this video, okay? Redo, go back through the video. That is something that's really nice from doing this at home and doing these videos is because you have the, the opportunity to just rewind. You can't do that in real class. So this is a, this is a positive for this, even though I miss you. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this and we're gonna move on to number three. Okay, let's see how much time we've been. Okay, all right, number three. Okay, this says, you know what, actually, I'm just gonna read it to you and we're gonna just translate it there, okay? Mater poculum sub brachio tenet. Okay, so put brackets around, or not brackets, but parentheses around your prepositional phrase Mark your subject and your verb. And I see a direct object as well, okay? All right, so you should have mater, your subject, poculum, your direct object, parentheses around a prepositional phrase, sub brachio, and then two lines for your verb under ten net. Okay, so this is mother holds the cup under the arm. Isn't that so crazy that the doctor did that? Cutting his arm to bleed him to try to help his foot? So funny. Anyways, okay, so mother holds a cup under the arm. Um, the next one is also not too bad. Quintus senses the knife on his arm. Okay, I want you to go on ahead and try to write that out. With your mom, you can pause it and double check with your mom whether or not that's correct. I don't think that I need to do that one up here. It's just not that difficult. Okay, so let's look at number four. I'm gonna go to number four. Okay, number four. I see, hmm, actually I might just read this one to you too to just try to help it make, make it a little faster. Okay, so the doctor, so medicus quintum sanare non potest quia stultus est. I think you can probably translate that one, right? The doctor, now do you see this special uh, complementary verb there? Is not able or cannot, okay? The doctor cannot, what? heal Quintus, or the doctor is not able to heal Quintus, okay? Because he is stultus, stupid. Okay, let's try the next one. Um, 